Today, we delve into a subject that's currently trending in both artificial intelligence and music. But first, let's talk about a recent development that's sparking a legal dispute before we get into the AI reproductions of Um Kulthum's performances. There have been rumors that an artificial intelligence AI voice named Um Kulthum has been making waves in Egypt, prompting debate about the limits of technology and artistic heritage. As we set off on our journey today, we'll examine the ethical and legal ramifications that follow this technological breakthrough, in addition to the possibility of using AI to replicate Um Kulthum's performances. Um Kulthum, dubbed the Star of the East, had a lasting impression on the music industry with her compositions that stand the test of time and her strong voice. We'll now look at the recent debate involving an artificial intelligence, AI, generated um Kulthum voice and how it complicates our exploration today as technology develops. beginnings were modest. In Tame al-Zahira in the Nile Delta, she was born Fatima Ibrahim as Saeed al-Biltagi. Her birth date is unknown. It has been reported as either May 4, 1904 or December 31, 1898. She was the youngest child of local mosque Imam Sheikh Ibrahim al-Saeed al-Baltagi, and she picked up singing from seeing her father instruct her elder brother. She is reported to have memorized the entire Quran, which her father taught her to recite. Her vocal ability was also noted by her father, and at the age of 12, she joined the family group that performed at religious ceremonies and weddings. However, in order to avoid the public's displeasure, she dressed like a boy. Following multiple visits to Cairo, Um Kulthum made the permanent relocation to the capital in 1923, where she was taught and mentored by renowned vocalist and composer Sheikh Abu Aila Muhammad, her striking contralto voice wasn't the only thing that made her stand out. Um Kulthum was also known as the Bedouin because of her traditional attire. She never wavered from her modest rural upbringing during her professional life. In 1926, she secured her first recording contract and started assembling her own musical group, known as Takht. She encountered poets as she interacted with Cairo's cultural scene, most notably Ahmad Rami, who penned 137 of her song's lyrics. She was first brought to the Arabic Theatre Palace by virtuoso oud musician and composer Muhammad El Kasabgi, where she achieved her first major hit. She left on her first extended tour of the Middle East in 1932, visiting cities like Damascus, Baghdad, Beirut, Tunis, and Tripoli. In 1934, she performed at Radio Cairo's premiere. Um Kulthum gained recognition as the voice of Egypt in the 1940s, thanks to her numerous concerts and radio broadcasts. In addition, she gave a special performance for the Egyptian royal family, and King Farouk bestowed upon her the Wissan el Kamal. 
the highest honor bestowed upon only politicians and members of the royal family. Her friendship with the overthrown pharaoh led to her expulsion from the Egyptian Musicians Guild during the 1952 revolution. <laughs> أم كلثوم كانت بتغني للملك، إحنا منعناها. قالوا لهم إيه؟ منعتوها؟ يعني إيه منعتوها؟ أم كلثوم تمنعوها من الإذاعة، أنتوا عايزين الشعب يتقلب علينا؟ أنتوا اتجننتوا؟ and demanded that the Musicians Guild return her. Additionally, he capitalized on Um Kultum's notoriety by airing his lectures just after her radio appearances. President Anwar Sadat replaced one of her songs, Wallahi Zaman Ya Salahi, as Egypt's national anthem in 1960 to 1970. The less militant Biladi, Biladi, Biladi is still the national anthem today. By 1975, um Kulthum's condition had become serious enough for the Egyptian media to publish daily reports on it. وحسيت يعني ان ام كلثوم يمكن مش هنسمعها تاني. She passed away from heart failure on February 3rd, 1975. She was 77. Four million mourning Egyptians lined the streets to see her funeral cortege, making her funeral a state occasion. Envision Um Kulthum's illustrious performances as though they were happening right now. The prospect of replicating her powers becomes alluring due to the progress made in artificial intelligence. However, enormous power also entails considerable responsibility. Amr Mustafa, an Egyptian producer and composer, has sparked a heated controversy on social media after releasing a promotional trailer with a sample of his work and the AI-generated voice of the late Egyptian superstar Um Kulthum. Aftekerlak A is a 32-second audio clip that Mustafa wrote and lyricized. It was shared with an image of Kulthum and himself. Later on, he removed the message. But on May 19th, he uploaded an updated version to his social media platforms that included a video of a burning candle. In the updated caption, Mustafa stated that artificial intelligence was used to generate the footage and removed Kulthum's name, highlighting the experiment's inventive character. Egyptians reacted differently to the occurrence, which has furthered the discussion around ownership and authenticity in the music business. Many who applauded the sample praised Mustafa's inventiveness and originality, appreciating the release of fresh material linked to a legend who is considered to be among the greatest vocalists in the Arabic-speaking world. Um Kulthum is regarded as a national treasure. Her stirring performances made her a symbol of Egyptian and Arab pride, and her artistic talent has enthralled audiences for years. Many reactions were positive, even though some people thought the clip was scary or inauthentic. Mohsen Gaber, the proprietor of Alam El Fan, the production firm that owns the rights to Kulthum's music, took issue with the footage though. During an interview on Egyptian television, Gaber defended his rights to the intellectual property of Um Kulthum's songs, and stressed that it was improper to use her voice, image, or an AI-generated version of them without the license owner's permission. According to Egyptian law, Kulthum and her heirs' rights would be violated if the icon's image, voice, or name were used to sing Mustafa's melodies, especially before it has been 50 years since her death in 1975, Gaber contended that this would happen. Gihan El Dasuki, Kulthum's granddaughter, also voiced her disdain. We were afraid that her music would become like Maraganat, the woman said, 
referring to a popular Egyptian folk electronic music genre that emerged from the country's slums and has gained popularity in the last 10 or so years. Maragonaut is known for its explicit lyrics and themes surrounding drugs and sexuality. Mustafa and the family's attorney, Yasser Kantush, shared an update on May 23, stating that an agreement had been reached and that the family's concerns had been addressed. The core issue in the debate over AI-generated music is Mustafa's explanation for using Kulthum's voice in the sample, that it was an artificially generated rendition rather than the real thing. بتحب الجمهور اكتر ولا فنك اكتر بحب الجمهور وبحب فني عشان اسعده بيه اذا كان يعني ده يسعده نسيت النوم From Abdel Halim Hafez to Amy Winehouse, AI-generated voices of living and deceased artists have been used in a steady stream of new music shared on social media platforms in recent years. These clasps comes in the midst of a famous TikTok-driven pattern of displaying artificial intelligence-produced voices of worldwide specialists, for example. Ariana Grande and Rihanna performing Arabic pop art. In any case, these deliveries frequently happen without the craftsman's authorization or association, and have raised alert about the legitimateness and moral limits of such practices. Although the breakthrough of artificial intelligence is vital in all industries, the rapid rate of development has been unprecedented for legislators. Similarly, as with the instance of Amr Mustafa's example, the lawful ramifications are not exclusively associated with the actual innovation, but instead the encroachment of privileges related with a singular's name and licensed innovation. The development of the algorithms in this area of technology is extremely fast, and there is no legitimate structure explicitly around these improvements without vagueness in the regulations or shows. As AI advances at a striking rate, there is a significant split among legislators and programming designers. When you consider how to strike a balance between protecting individual rights and encouraging creativity and innovation, the problem becomes more complicated. Perceiving the significance of giving credit to trendsetters and specialists, lawmakers are requiring a far-reaching legitimate structure that recognizes the two breaks and insurance of privileges. We really are empowering development. We energize inventiveness. However, we need to regard the common freedoms and proprietorship regulations, said Mohammed Agami a legitimate subject matter expert and overseeing accomplice at Connections and Gains, a Cairo-based law office. We, as legitimate workforce, need to change the daily schedule, old-school thinking, and attempt to adjust to the new universe of innovation. The virtual world is becoming more noteworthy than the actual one. We have a word in Arabic that we call Tafrib, Taraf. I don't know of an English word that would give that sense, except perhaps the word ecstasy. The signature dark glasses were a shield against intense and prolonged exposure to stage and studio lighting. This is a woman who was actually blinded by her own fame. Um Kulthum retains near total recognition in the Arab world. Her biographer Virginia Danielson summarized her hence. 
Envision a vocalist with the virtuosity of Joan Sutherland or Ella Fitzgerald, the public persona of Eleanor Roosevelt and the crowd of Elvis, and you have Um Cultham. This concludes our investigation of Um Cultham and the fascinating world of artificial intelligence recreations. Much thanks to you for going along with us on this remarkable experience at the convergence of custom and innovation. Until next time. <laughs>